So last week after Gerard Mayo, the new head coach of my favorite team, the New England Patriots, had his press conference, the world was set ablaze because he had the audacity to acknowledge the fact that he is in fact black, even though he, as clear as I am now, is in fact black and his name is Gerard. He had the audacity to acknowledge that color exists, but I'm not gonna sit here and explain it to you. I'm going to play you the exact clips from the press conference with full context. Cause on the Kev BK beloved show, we love facts and context. And I want us all to be on the same page. So we're going to do it just like this in his opening statement. He acknowledges the fact that he's the first black head coach in the history of the new England Patriots. And you better believe it. Being the first black coach here in new England means a lot to me. So next we'll go to the reporter's question who asked Robert Kraft and him, what does it mean to be the first black head coach? as well as something else about asking other black head coaches for advice. I apologize to his reporter. I tried to find his name. I couldn't find it. My bad, my brother. Yeah, uh, Gerard, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, question first, Robert. Uh, Gerard said that uh, being the first black coach was important to him. Curious, what does it mean to you? And if I could ask you, Gerard, have you reached out to any of the folks like, you know, Tony or, you know, Tom, and just to get their sense of what it, what what it means to them you want to start off Look. all right so now we got gerard's opening statement the question was based off of and the question now let's get robert Kraft's answer you want to start off Look. yeah let, let me say this to you um i'm really colorblind in terms of i know what i feel like on Sunday when we lose. And I can just tell you that there's nothing after my family, my passion is with the New England Patriots and there's something else very close second, but winning at the Patriots is my passion. So I want to get the best people I can get. I chose the best head coach for this organization. He happens to be a man of color, but I chose him because I believe he's best to do the job. I even I even let it go late. So you can see that Gerard Mayo, in fact, did not cut him off because I kept seeing that shit too. Now let's go with Gerard Mayo's answer. Yeah, and you know, Mike T, he reached out. He's actually from our hometown back in Virginia as well. So uh, we haven't really talked about the challenges I appreciate, you know, Thunder and the organization selecting me to be a black head coach. I would say what, what Thunder just talked about, that was in the locker room. You want your locker room to be pretty diverse and you will want the world to look like that. What I will say, though, is I do see color because I believe if you don't see color, you can't see racism. Up, up, up. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. Because that's as far as most of you got was that statement. But let's hear the rest of it. And whatever whatever happens black white disabled person i've always even someone with disabilities i always uh you know for the most part people are like you know don't you know when they're young they they kind of make the spot hot younger people know what that means but what i would say is like no i want you to be able to go up to those people and really understand those people so it goes back to whatever it is black white yellow it really doesn't matter but it does matter so we can try to fix a problem that we all know we have so Patriot social media accounts, specifically the Twitter, did themselves a huge disservice by tweeting out just that quote because they have absolutely no self-awareness of their fan base. And the moment I saw that tweet, I said, yep, <laughs> I know how this is going to go. Can I read y'all a couple of these responses? The moment you click the tweet, as I just did this, the first one you see is from a woman by the name of Patriot Aaron saying, believe it or not, hating white people is racism too. Next. We have a comment on one of my videos that didn't even address the press conference. This is just the one that I just so happened to release the day the press conference came out because my podcast released the same day the press conference was. So obviously I didn't have time to cover the press conference. Gerard Mayo is a racist. I refuse to support racism. And so I'm selling my season tickets, supporting a different team. Don't support racism. I got one more for you. Because you may be thinking, oh, these are just dickheads on the internet. Oh, they're just faceless accounts. Fox News. New Pats coach rips people who don't see color. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just played you 
the entire context of that clip was anything in those comments. Did any of that make sense? Of course it didn't. Oh, and this, this one I kept getting. There are way too many examples of this to make in one comment. It can be summarized by this. He's there at a football conference and he's focused on race the whole time. Couple things there. One, all those clips I just paid for y'all were two minutes and 30 seconds in total. Two, how could he not acknowledge the race thing? Was he supposed to leave his skin at home? Lastly, the press conference was 40 minutes long. The YouTube video is 39 minutes and 16 seconds. I would know how long the press conference was because I watched it live every single second of it because that's the first time I've got to see a head coach get introduced to my team in my entire life. Even on that very same Patriots Twitter account for you people who say he spent the entire press conference focused on race, there are seven other clips from that same press conference where they say nothing about the color of Gerard Mayo's skin. Would you like to guess the one that got the most views and attention and engagement? So if the two minute and 30 second clip of the 40 minute press conference is the one that y'all are the ones that are drawn to and keep paying attention to, who's the one that's only focused on race again? And by your logic, the simple acknowledgement that race and color are a thing and seeing racism, which were dry mail's actual comments, those things make you a racist because that's what you called him. So that would make you racist too, right? You see how fucking stupid that sounds? But that hypocrisy isn't even the funny part to me. The real funny part is I know in the marrow of my bones that y'all don't even believe what you're saying. You're just a parrot robot for whatever right wing media member that you think is smarter than you. And right wing media has been running the same playbook since the dawn of time. Right wing media is the Shanahan system of news since this is still a football podcast, right? They all run the same plays because they know their consumer base is gonna eat that shit up all the time. And it's been working forever. They don't even respect y'all enough to change up the play calls. It's come up to the line. Mm. Trips right eye, blame the minorities on one on one. Ready, break. Pro left eye, blame the gays. Ready, break. Spread wide tight. They're just lazy and entitled on two on two. Ready, break. Everybody from Bill O'Reilly to Rush Limbaugh to Glenn Beck to Tammy Lauren, Ben Shapiro, you name them, Tucker Carlson, they've all been running the same playbook. And the funny part is, the other funny part is most of this playbook is based on and rooted in, they know that y'all are not going to do the additional research to see that what they're saying to you is bullshit. Because for y'all that are going off on the whole dry male hates white people thing, there's no way in hell that you can listen to that, what, 50-something second clip of his actual statement, and that is your takeaway. I refuse to believe that. I just refuse to believe it. But right-wing media knows that they give y'all these cute little sayings and they say it with enough conviction, y'all eat that shit up and you little pair of robots just keep on repeating whatever you hear. Up uh, there, just lazy and entitled. If you stop focusing on race, then racism will end. What do you mean black lives matter? All lives matter. Matter of fact, I got this comment. Expect another terrible season and more to come as long as Mayo was the head coach. Dude is too worried about DEI. By the way, I promise you the person who made this comment did not hear the term DEI before the last month, but I digress. That's another one that the right wing media has made it a point to make an acronym so they can vilify that because if they said what DEI actually means, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion, saying things like DEI will be the downfall of America will make them sound a little too much like Nazis blatantly. In closing, so I can get back to this football shit, if something as simple as what Gerard Mayo said, which on a revolutionary scale of one to Malcolm X is about a one and a half. If that triggered you, which is what happened, you were triggered, then I guess we gotta evaluate who the real snowflakes are now, don't we? Like the, these right wing parrots will literally tell you if you complain about the country, then leave. Let me say that again for you. If you complain about the country that you live in and were born in, leave. <laughs> if that's not some cult shit, I don't know what is. Another line I kept getting, was the NFL, the players are 56% black. All the players are 56% black. Everyone just had that number offhand. Y'all couldn't wait to slam that down like the big joker, huh? When we were talking about fucking coaching, <laughs> which was the actual topic of discussion, but since y'all got numbers so much, I got my coaching numbers in front of me. Wanna hear them? You wanna know how many black coaches are in the league? As of last week, there are five black coaches in the league. Two of them 
were higher than the last week. Gerard Mayo and Antonio Pierce. So at the start of last season, only three of the 32 NFL head coaches were black. That is 9% of the league. You want to know how many head coaches all time were black? This is according to WCSX.com. As of February 2023, out of the over 500 coaches all time in the NFL, only 24 of them were black. So 24 out of 500. It said over 500. But for y'all, I'll lowball it. Out of 24 out of 500, what's that? 4.8%. I'll, I'll do you a favor. I'll round up. Let's call it five. Since y'all just love numbers so goddamn much. I got more for you. You know the amount of teams that have never had a head coach? In the history of their franchise, mind you, the NFL is over 100 years old. There are 13 teams, roughly 40% of the league, that have never had a black head coach that wasn't an interim coach. For y'all that are unfamiliar with the term, the interim coach is, all right, we fired our head coach. We need somebody to steer the ship before we ultimately fire everybody else in the building before the season ends. Eh, throw the black guy in there. Couple really big names on that list too. Lists including the Washington Commanders, formerly known as the Redskins. If you know the racial history of that team, shouldn't surprise you. The Dallas Cowboys, America's team, how fitting. And the New York Giants, who just had their first black starting quarterback a couple years back. And the ownership was so mad about it, they fired the coaching staff the following Monday. True story, look it up. The situation for black coaches in the NFL is so bad. They had to pass legislation just for the coaches to get an interview. That rule was called the Rooney Rule and is defined as such. It was dictated that all NFL teams must interview at least one minority candidate for head coach openings. That was passed 21 years ago. And it was recently expanded, so now they got to interview two head coaching candidates. And it was expanded to other front office management positions and blah, 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 blah. So that was 21 years ago. I put this at 2003. If I remember correctly, that's right after the season that Tony Dungy and Dennis Green got fired when they were the only black coaches in the league at the time. So the NFL had zero black head coaches. Here we are 21 years later, and the number went from zero to five. What progress. Oh, my God. How progressive to the point where we all know what's going on with the Rooney Row and how these teams are escaping it. Even the insiders are pointing it out. Albert Breer and Adam Scheffner both tweeted out once these teams have interviewed their second black head coaching candidate that they have now fulfilled their Rooney rule and they can go hire the white man they actually wanted. That's damn near verbatim minus the white man they actually wanted part. And a lot of fans are mad at them. But bruh, they're doing us a favor because they're just saying the quiet part out loud because we all knew it. And that's not an indictment on these black coaches, by the way, who are in most cases, the overwhelming majority of them are more than qualified to be head coaches. It is a direct indictment on NFL ownership and their hiring practices because we know that they ain't doing shit but checking a box until they can hire the person they actually want to. But like I've always said on this podcast, I am not here to educate you on how racism works in the year of our law 2024. If you don't know by now, it's because you either don't care or you want it to continue. In both cases, fuck you, I hope you die. But to the sane-minded, I have to ask you, how do we go from 56% of the NFL players being black to 5 to 9% of the coaches being black? And that's before we even get to GMs and God forbid ownership. If the answer is not racial bias, then what is it? It's not they're not smart enough. Think of all the dumbass coaches that we watch every single week. Can't be because they don't work hard enough. They're professional athletes. They work hard enough to make it all the way to the league. They're not hard enough workers to coach. Come on now. So what could it be? What is this huge roadblock that all these NFL owners just can't get past that is stopping all these black coaches from getting an opportunity? We all know what the answer is, whether you want to admit it or not. 